Well, I think this is finally the last video about Maxwell 2D. If you've arrived to this point, you must have a lot of patience. Okay, uh, let's go now to the configuration of the processor and then the, the analysis uh, of the results by means of the post processor. Well, let's go here. Uh, if you remember the, la the previous video, in, in that uh, case we have defined everything, so we had all the, the things we need to solve the problem. There's something I'm not going to be able to do right now, because if I do it, uh, then I cannot show you the, re the results. That's, that's the meshing uh, process. And it is really nice to see, and it is probably the most important thing in a finite element model. So, I will go straight uh, forward to this uh, problem. I will adjust the executive uh, parameters. We will see the post-processing. And then I will go back and I will show you the machine because it is really nice to see and very important to to learn about that okay let's go here what is the first thing we can find? colors we go to this point and we have put nothing why we haven't put nothing? because I wasn't interested on introducing the hysteresis loop and then the mass density of the material and then a, lo a, lo a lot of different things that would only affect the result is that the efficiency of the machine is a little bit lower so if you are trying to design something uh, which needs to get all the data including magnetic losses you have to go to this display and okay put the values of the cycle you know this is the widthness of the cycle some constants uh, the values of the ma of the minimum and maximum uh, v of the cycle you've defined the des density of the material the frequency and so on so then we forget this. Let's go to setup solution. We've got options for the mathematical solver and options for the motion setup of a machine. Let's go first to the options of the mathematical solver. Okay. As you can see, first thing that appears here is the mesh. The mesh you will see later what it is but it's the, the division uh, of all the uh, of all the space where the model is into very small pieces, uh, small, uh, pieces that in this case are triangles. If I press manual mesh then the actual the present mesh is deleted and if it is deleted I lose also the result so I'm not going to do it we will see that later okay we have selected transient analysis I'm not going to get into other, possibili into other possibilities but you can select AC analysis, DC analysis, uh, magnetostatic analysis and a lot of different things uh, the, uh, this is uh, this is quite clear in in the in the help of, of, of the pro of the pro so it doesn't worth uh, to waste time on, on that moreover uh, for most of the cases you will need a transient analysis analysis unfortunately because this is the slowest of all the of all the analysis because you have to take into account motion you can select a fixed 
time step for the simulation or an adaptive time step. Adaptive time step means that the algorithm of solution of all this, the huge amount of differential equations you've got decides when it can take a longer step and when it needs a shorter step. This option reduces the time of simulation. Of course it can be a, a constant value or you can even define a function to change the evolution of the time step during time. The most normal thing is to use an adaptive time step. The tolerance, the initial time step, the maximum and the minimum are things you must define depending on, on the time simulation lasts. Obviously, the shortest time step, the shortest maximum step, the shortest minimum step make a better simulation. But of course, too, it creates a simulation that sometimes may last one year. So, you have to play with these variables to have a time good enough to get your results. This is your stop time. It means that you're going to simulate the motor from the standstill situation of a stopped motor up to 5 seconds. 5 seconds is a lot, especially with these time steps. And it takes quite a while. I don't know exactly how long can, can it take right now because this solution came from France from a laptop computer and it was really an annoying thing because it took more or less one week. I'd imagine if I run this right now in, in my computer, uh, not in this one, that is uh, an old one, in, in a computer with solid state disks and i7 com uh, core uh, processor it will take quite uh, a shorter time but I don't know here you have to define something that probably you didn't notice up to now we are in a 2D definition but we haven't said uh, anything about the length of the magnetic core it must be put here this symmetry multiplier is for the case we had defined not a complete cross section of the machine but only a quarter for instance then multiplier should be 4 and this output error means only that if it get some trouble during simulation it will give you a, a warning that's all so if we skip mesh, we've got everything defined in sorry in options. Since we are in a transient simulation, what we've got now is to define motion, to define how the motor is going to move. Well, I, here it is warning about if I am going to view only or modify the results and, and so on. I'm going to press modify. Let's live a risky life. And here you've got everything concerning the motion of a, the motion of, of the motor. You have to define what parts are going to be moving and what parts are going to be stationary. What uh, what is what is going to be for sure for sure a stationary? Everything that is in the stator, a stator, and all the faces inside the stator, and of course the 
Eh, sorry, nothing else. All the phases of the stator. Ah, and of course, I, I told you, the slot insulation. There was a material. I don't have a zoom here. Uh, okay, I will just zoom here. Shit. Let's go to one slot. This is the insulating material. So 